show, who is probably one of the kindest, most sweet, sincere sisters. She sent me a birthday card. And she always sends a whole bunch of stuff inside. Matter of fact, that clock thing that Brother Ernest was saying. But she sent this, this, and this right here should explain to everybody in here. And I want to thank God for Bobby being here tonight. Amen. That means a lot to me. But anyway, I want to read you this. This says, it says, thank God. It says, dear God, I want to thank you for what you have already done. I am going to wait. I'm not going to wait until I see results or receive rewards. I'm going to thank you right now. I'm not going to wait until I feel better or things look better. I'm going to thank you right now. I'm not going to wait until people say or say they're sorry or until they stop talking about me. I'm going to thank God right now. I'm not going to wait until the pain in my body disappears. I'm just going to thank God right now. I'm not going to wait until financial situations improve. I'm going to serve. I'm going to thank God right now. And I'm not going to wait until the children are asleep and the house is peaceful. I'm going to thank God right now. I'm not going to wait till I get promoted or I get a job. I'm going to thank God right now. Right now. And I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait until I understand every life's experience. But I'm going uh, and, and, and when He calls me pain and grief, I want to thank God right now. Right. And I'm not going to wait until the journey gets easier or the challenges are removed. I'm going to thank God right now. Right. I'm thanking you because I'm alive. I'm thanking you because I made it through this day's difficulties. I thank you for you because I have walked around the obstacles. I'm thanking you because I have the ability and the opportunity to do better. And I thank you, God, because you haven't given up on me. Amen. I thank you. Praise my name. Praise God. You know, Brother Winterburn was here last Saturday, and uh, God used him to take God used him to take a big load off me. Since I've been where I'm at, I've read the Bible all the way through and halfway through again. I read Psalms two times over and halfway and going back through it again. But I was reading Ezekiel the other day. And you know, I used to I used to always make everybody think that, you know, I was somebody big in the world. I was Hollywood and I had all this going on for me and all this going on for me. Well in Ezekiel, the twenty sixth, but especially the twenty seventh chapter, there was a city that was on the seashore named Tyrus. And if everybody in here reads Ezekiel the twenty seventh chapter, Man, that city had everything that you would want in a city going for it. It had the best of the best of the best of the best. Yes. But it was the New York of that day. that day. And I won't tell you, or the Hollywood of that day, whatever you want to look at. But I will tell you this. They had the wrong spirit. All right. Man. And Jesus didn't want to do it. He didn't have anything to do with anybody the right spirit. So he said, I'll show Tyrus. And I'm going to make sure it falls into the sea. I'm going to send spies and everything else, and we're going to destroy that. But I just want you to read. If you read Ezekiel, the 27th chapter, and you see all the things that this city had going for it. It just goes to show, no matter how big you think you are, or who you think you are, or what you think you are, right. God can jerk out. He can, he can jerk it right out from under you. Not only can he, but he will. He'll humble you. And except the Lord build the house. Oh yes. They that build it labor in vain. But I just want to thank God because, hey, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait till all this stuff happens. I'm gonna thank God right now. And I love it.